Hello, this is Vince from Burn Stainless with another episode of Vince in Shorts. It's getting a little bit warmer now. I'm sure you will actually see me in real shorts very soon. But I digress. I would like to talk about uh, the header again. Um, talked a little bit about flanges. Actually, the last two videos are about flanges, and um, I could keep on talking about flanges because every time I do one of these videos, I think of something else we could have spoken about. But I think we've uh, done too much on flanges at this point. So we're going to move on. The next part of the header, of course, is going to be the exhaust tubing. And we're going to use, again, the example of our uh, NASCAR Tri-Y header to discuss a few things. This is the header from a couple weeks ago. And again, it was a four into two into one header. Uh, this was a NASCAR or Winston Cup or a Sprint Cup header, probably 10, 12 year old technology here that we're looking at. So we talked about flanges and we went through the various materials and types of flange materials and such before. So now I want to talk about the tubing. This header was made out of uh, 321 stainless steel. The reason it was made out of 321 stainless is because the NASCAR race is a long mileage durability type test so they are very concerned about uh, longevity and because of the being really pretty much at open throttle for the full raise the temperatures in the exhaust system are very high so 321 stainless becomes a very excellent choice there these materials though that you would probably use would be mild steel and mild steel of course uh, is pretty good uh, we really don't like it unless, of course, it's going to be ceramic coated. A ceramic coated header, it works very, very well. Um, one of the advantages of stainless steel is that it has a low thermal conductivity factor. That means that it takes uh, more time for heat to travel through a stainless steel uh, header wall than it does a mild steel header wall. However, if you take the mild steel and you put a ceramic coating on it, that acts as an insulating layer and gives you some of the benefits of, of the stainless steel, but with the less expensive uh, mild steel materials. Like any coating, coatings can fail, and in terms of longevity, you really cannot beat a set of stainless steel headers. Back to the material, the standard material that we would use in a header would be 304 stainless. 304 stainless is an authentic stainless steel, which essentially means it's a non-magnetic stainless steel has much less ferric compounds in it than, let's say, a 400 series material. So it's going to last much, much longer. So we've talked about mild steel. I briefly mentioned the 400 series stainlesses, which a lot of OEMs and some of your less expensive mass headers that come from China and other places are made out of a 400 st series stainless. Uh, 304 would be kind of the workhorse stainless steel for headers. The temperature range that we recommend, 304, would be for temperatures less than 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Above 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, you do get extra strength from 321 and even from 316. However, 321 is typically a little bit less expensive than 316 and is why it's often chosen for um, header applications. Other materials that would be uh, used here could be Inconel. Uh, typically, exhaust systems would be made out of Inconel 625 alloy, and then also uh, titanium. Now, we really do not like to use titanium for header systems because what's used typically is commercial grade titanium because of the formability, so we can bend tubing out of it. However, the high temperature characteristics of titanium probably have a similar uh, thermal range as let's say mild steel. So we think that titanium uh, can work excellent for an undercar exhaust, someplace where the temperatures are low, but I think for a header uh, it really is not a good material. And we've had a lot of motorcycle headers that have been brought into the shop that have uh, with, uh, made out of titanium that have cracked and the customers want us to come in and see if we can uh, repair them. So we can, it's a repeat, somebody, they keep coming back in, we keep welding it up, and after a while, the whole header would just uh, fall apart, so they would go to another material. So that's why we really do not like to use titanium. But I do have some examples of titanium and examples of titanium and Inconel headers materials. Um, this is titanium. It's a um, 
I actually take that back. This is the ink canal. And what really surprised me is because it's a very thin wall ink canal. So the material, the lightness of the material is uh, deceptive. This is titanium. Uh, this is a thicker wall titanium. And uh, might, that's also some, a very interesting uh, thing that just kind of came up out of that. Uh, a lot of people think titanium is light. And yes, it is. It is very, very uh, low density. However, the strength of titanium is not as good as the strength of stainless steel. So you can use much thinner cross sections of stainless steel or ink canal than you can for titanium, particularly when you're going up to the higher temperatures. So for example, we had a system, uh, exhaust system, a muffler system for a C6 Corvette made out of stainless steel. There was a opposing company or a competitor that made a system out of titanium. Well, our system from stainless steel was actually a tad bit lighter than the titanium system from the competitor. And that's because really the, we were able to run a much thinner gauge uh, wall on that. The actual pipes were made out of 18 gauge or 049 wall piping, and the mufflers were actually made out of an 035 wall. Whereas the titanium, I'm sure they were probably at 065 or higher in order to take all the abuses of a, of a street car like a Corvette. So um, again, one of the reasons that we really do not care much for uh, titanium. Although you can get some pretty nice coloring on titanium, the welding looks really bitchin', the uh, acid etches and stuff, you can get some nice colors. So for all those reasons, I mean, titanium uh, can be very good. And again, it is light in, in the right application. But um, again, we prefer Inconel or stainless steel or even mild steel. So we've talked about a few different uh, gauges of materials and I just thought I might give you just some quick uh, thumb rules as to when we use what material. So again, I mentioned that 304 stainless is our workhorse material and we would re really tip typically choose a 16 gauge or a 65 thousandths wall stainless steel 304 for building headers for a street car, for a road race car, an endurance car because there's gonna be a lot of strength there. Um, again, we do have a little bit of penalty of weight from the thicker gauge, but it's going to be something that's going to um, last for a long, a long, long time. Also, uh, 16 gauge is much easier to weld than the 18 gauges or 20 gauges material. So if you're, say, a beginner welder that's going to be building a set of headers, you might want to begin to start with the 065 wall material because it will be much easier to weld. Now, in drag racing applications, we like to go to an 18 gauge 304 material. That would be for a, typically for a naturally aspirated situation. And in some cases where we really, really want to get down in weight, even for a drag car, there have been some cases where we've gone to 20 gauge. Now, when you're going down to those lighter, lighter gauges in order to try to save weight, we do recommend that it's probably a good idea that as you're coming out of the flange and going into the header, that the first step of the, of the header would be a thicker material, let's say an 18 gauge material, and then the next uh, steps down through the pipe down to, let's say, a 20 gauge. That way you get a lot of strength at the head where you get a lot of vibration and a lot of stresses that occur up there. But as you move down through the system, you give it a lighter gauge and it's a good way of saving weight. Another way of saving weight actually is going to a tri -wise. For a properly developed tri -wise, which is typically a four into one and a tri -wise, the total system length is the same. For example, in this example here, when I say system length, I'm talking the length from the head all the way down to the final collector. In this situation here, we're probably around a 30 to 32 inches, I think, in the, in the total length. Well, a four into one would really be the same overall length is this one. However, in that case, we would have four tubes of that 30, 32 inch length. Here we only have four tubes at a smaller length. Let's say here, maybe we're about 15 inches or 20 inches. And then you have only two tubes back here. So you actually drop weight here. So that's another advantage of a, of a tri-wise system. And we'll talk about the um, advantages of tri-wise and four into ones in a, in a later video. So please stay tuned for that. When we go to a turbo system, we really like to go to 321 stainless. Um, 
many people do really do not know what their exhaust gas temperatures are in their engines when they're operating. And that's really the best indication of determining what material you want to use. But because turbos are high pressure and typically higher temperature, we like to just to go to the 321 16 gauge material right off the bat. And the, op, the, ga, the temperature range of 321, we like to recommend between, let's say, 1400 degrees, which is the upper limit for 304 stainless, all the way up to 1800 degrees uh, for 321. Higher than 321, we really think that you should be going to Inconel. Um, the gauges of Inconel can depend. NASCAR currently, many of the teams will use Inconel, and they're using fairly lightweight uh, light gauges, uh, 35 thousandths wall or so, in order to save weight on the vehicles. And it gets a naturally aspirated situation. They're not seeing the super, super high temperatures, and that's pretty adequate. If you're going to a turbo system, I think that an 18 gauge in Canel is um, a, a good material to use for a lightweight turbo system, assuming that you don't have more information about exhaust gas temperatures. Also, another thing to mention is that when you have a turbo system in a drag car, um, you can probably cheat these rules a little bit and use, let's say, a 321 18 gauge, because again, in a drag car situation, you're really only seeing maximum temperatures for, let's say, five to 10 seconds, plus a few runs or so. So um, you can really maybe get away with a little bit less material strength and, and thickness in that particular case. Also, last thing I want to talk about in this header is the stepped header design. I think I brought this out in the, next, in the last videos, but this system actually goes from an inch and seven eighths outside diameter here to a two inch diameter here. And this causes the step in this situation here. The purpose of a step is to help broaden the power band of the engine. Um, the ideal shape of an exhaust tube, in our opinion, would be a constantly tapering tube that would taper from the exhaust port down to the collector size. The collector sizing, we, we actually size through our program called X-Design, and you can fill out the race engine spec form on our website to get an analysis done. But since a constantly tapering header is a bit of a, a hard um, thing to do, although uh, we have actually built a uh, constantly tapering pro stock header for a famous pro stock driver, and that driver is one of his, he says it's one of his favorite headers. I don't know if it's because how much he paid Jack to make it or because it actually runs good down the track. But actually, I think it runs very, very well down the track. And that was one of his uh, R&D headers. But in, in the real world where we're trying, we can approximate that by going to a stepped header. And we like to go with the equal length steps on that because, again, what we're trying to do is approximate a constantly tapering header. And the best way to do that would be with equal length steps. Um, in one of our later videos, I'll be discussing how you actually make this joint. That was one of the questions that we had uh, brought up from the original first video. And there'll be some several techniques there that we'll go over with that. And then also, one of the other questions that came up is how do we design our collectors? What angles do we use? Um, various uh, other details about the collectors, and we will discuss that as well. So I think for today, that's all I want to talk about. Again, I hope you're enjoying this series. Um, we'll be sending out an email just letting you know that the video is up and uh, running on YouTube. And please feel free to use those comments there or send me an email on what you think of it. So until next time, this is Vincent Shorts. Goodbye.